So, hi everybody, thanks for coming. Uh, if you uh, saw my presentation yesterday, this is one of the slides that I had there. And uh, this talk is going to be about developing applications for Sailfish for Yola. Just a short introduction into the topic. And I said yesterday that there are two options how to write applications for Yola. One is native one using C++ and Qt and QML. The other one is writing Android application. So I'm not going to speak about Android. We will take a look at how you can write application for Yola the native way. And my goal with this talk is uh, show you that it's not scary and it's easy and you should start playing with that. So first thing that you need is download SDK from their website and install it. Once you get it, sorry? Uh, first question, how big is it? <laughs> it's actually quite big. Uh, after installation, I think it's something like two gigs, 2.7, four, almost four. The thing why it's so big is it actually contains uh, at least two VMs as part of it. Uh, once you install it, uh, the thing that you will need to run is Qt Creator. Uh, just a question, do you, have you ever written something in Qt QML in Qt Creator? No? So, so new desktop environment for you, great. So it's some integrating development environment like um, many others. And when we want to start new application, I will just do file, new project. I will select that I want Sailfish OS Qt Quick application. And yeah, write something. Then I will select the targets that I want to want to use. Is it visible? Uh, and I'm not sure how to make it bigger. Well, there are two options. One is ARM v7 and other one is uh, i486. The i46 you need for debugging and for playing locally. And ARM v7 you need for actually deploying the application, for creating the final application. So I select both. Some description. I can add it to JIT or whatever. Finish, and I have a basic project. This thing is ready to be compiled, and I will get sample application out of it. Uh, there are several files that are interesting, and you should probably take a look at. There is a source directory with CPP file, and I will try to make it bigger somehow. Now, that's better, right? So, in C++ file, there is currently only one command that will basically create selfish, selfish application, and the rest of the logic of the application is written in QML. QML starts here. In uh, QML directory, there is uh, one main file, which says uh, use Qt Quick and Selfish Silica, which is which are the components that are used by Selfish OS. Then you have initial initial page. That's the page that will show up when you run the application. And then there is a cover page, which is uh, the page that uh, shows up when your application is minimized. If you don't provide the cover page, 
it will just show minimized version of your application. And this is QML. Have you seen QML before? I yeah, yesterday. So QML is a way how to write UI applications in Qt. It's kind of more designer oriented because you don't need to write complicated code, you don't need to allocate objects, you don't need to do this stuff that we are kind of used to. You don't meet any pointers and stuff like that. Uh, it's, uh, it looks kind of like CSS or something, so designers can really easily learn it. And you can write whole UI using just QML. And if you need some interaction between elements, you can use JavaScript. So if you have skilled uh, designer that is managing your website, it's probably not a big deal to learn, uh, to teach him to do some basic UI in QML. Let's take a look at the actual page. Uh, this Sailfish applications contains multiple pages usually. Page is one screen of the application. It can have some ID which you can reference later. If you, for example, have some variables locally or something. And here we can see how actually the UE, uh, UI looks like. Here you can, here's done, uh, here's a column. And in the column you put several elements. So you are making sure that they are below each other. You can do rows and Using these basic elements, you can build our UI. For more, here when I clip, click on help, there is a generic uh, Qt documentation, and there is also Selfish Silica reference, because uh, Qt Quick is generic, and it's used on desktop, but uh, Yola has some of their own components that sometimes inherits from Qt Quick and looks a little bit different and behaves a little bit different accustomed to their mobile UI. One of the design points of Yola is that uh, most of the applications are transparent, so you can see your background, and uh, you are not supposed to define actual colors. If you are, there is, uh, there are, there is primary color and secondary color and you should use, you should reference these because uh, when you actually create a team or set your background wallpaper, Selfish will automatically calculate what are the dominant colors in your background and create primary and secondary colors and highlight colors based on that. So it will match the whole OS team. So now we have some basic application. Now we switch to debug. And uh, to get application tested, we uh, I will start with stopping SDK because I didn't show it. Here are the control buttons of both of your VMs that are installed with SDK. First one is SDK itself that contains con uh, compiler and also this button is kind of interface to that where you can check updates and it, it can also verify your built RPMs whether they are suitable for uh, for App Store, for official App Store. The other VM that I can start is actually emulator. That's one thing that I showed yesterday on 
on my presentation, it will run virtual machine with selfish OS inside. Hopefully in a few minutes. Not really, it should be fa much faster. <laughs> yeah, we are there. So now I will just click on play and it should build my application. I can see some compiler output. And if everything goes well, yeah, it starts the application in the emulator. Now you can check your application, play with it. Uh, if we take a look at the source code, you can see that there was page header, which is UI template, and below that was label Hello Sailors, and we have both of them here. More design elements is that whole thing is flickable, which means that you can drag it, and there is pull down menu with uh, text show page two, and when you click on the on this menu item, it will push second page, second QML page, which we have here. Uh, to the page stack, so it will be on top. So you will see the other page. And we are on the other page. Because it was pushed on top of the page stack, we still have the previous page on there, so we can just go back with swipe gesture to the previous page. And this is the simplest application that you can do, well, it's, it's included. I will just show you that Cover also does some stuff. And code for the Cover. There are two actions that actually don't do anything. So that's the little demo. And I will show you some little bit bigger project, my application that I wrote some time ago. Uh, why is it a little bit more complicated is because I actually wrote some C code inside C++ and Qt, and I wanted to use this functionality that I wrote in C++ from the UI in QML. So, uh, I created a object, yeah. I had to create object which is inheriting from Q object. That's what I didn't like that much because if you want to pass, pass something to QML layer, you actually have to use Qt everywhere. There's no way to pass just one function. Uh, you have to put it into Q object and define some Q invocable functions on top of it. So I created uh, object PS or class PS and then here at the end, after defining all the methods that I actually wanted to use, I registered new type with uh, this convention. This is this is the number. This is some namespace, and this is the object name. And here I use the class that I used that I have in my header for defining the object. And now in these QML files, I, from apart from importing Selfie Silica and Qt Quick, I'm also importing my namespace with the version that I specified, and then I'm creating the instance of the object, and I'm creating it in 
application window for various reasons. And then I can reference it from somewhere else. Like here, uh, I specify initial page based on output of some function that I have, or well, static method of the object. So I call the method, and based on the output, I just select the initial page. Similarly, I can pass a data to that I have in different uh, project, but in general, the best way is to pass data as Q variant or Q variant list, because yeah, if you if you are using normal types, then I had really hard time to get them working in QML. So basically, I just gave up and converted everything to Q variant when I was returning it to UI layer, because UI layer can work with it quite well. Uh, that's my personal experience. Maybe if you meet somebody who does QML more than half a year, that I <laughs> I started playing with it when I got my phone. So I had to learn this stuff. But uh, yeah, some QML and Qt guys can help you with that. The advantage of using uh, this Qt QML stuff is that quite some KD applications already have it. And as far as I know, new KD will be written in QML as well. So porting shouldn't be that hard. And actually, there are some applications already ported. Yeah, that's all I wanted to show in the beginning. If you want to see something more or you have a questions, start asking. Question? So uh, I hope you can answer that a bit. Um, I just uh, learned about the Android SDK like a couple of months ago I started. Uh, I took a nice class and in the end we had a small project which was like write this virgin app. We actually got a skeleton and just had to fill in some stuff. And it was uh, also about uh, media stuff like capturing audio and video. Um, and that was a really horrible thing. Uh, actually, all I remember I was doing was initializing objects and typecasting. And that was really quite annoying. And uh, if you read through the code, it's, it's always hard to actually follow what, what's really happening. I mean, just in the very end, you know, it should work somehow, and in between, you have these millions of, of objects which are working and uh, inheriting from each other and whatever. Um, so, my, my point is, uh, I'm, I'm looking more for a platform which doesn't have uh, such a huge tree of inheritance. How is that in Sailfish? Well, uh, part is, as I said, there are these Sailfish silica components, but which are specific for this platform, uh, but they are inherited mostly from Qt, from Qt Quick, so you can treat them as some of the Qt Quick objects. Uh, for what do you want to write, if you want to write your own objects to do something more complicated, I saw that there is an option that you can actually ask uh, the QML thingy to actually return you just part of the screen and you can access it directly via OpenGL or something like that. So if you want to avoid whole QML, you can do with just minimal amount of QML, but it's not really what you want to do for UI application, but it will be probably really useful for video stuff, games and stuff like that. And they are working on, or they have a plan to actually uh, put SDL into the stack that is available. 
at some point. Does it answer a little bit? Okay, anything more? So I don't know any C++ or any QML or any Qt. It's a, are the docs sufficient for, I guess you started all this from, you knew C++ but not the rest of it, is that right? And was it easy to work? Because all that, I say, that's not very complicated, but it's finding out which thing you actually needed to type at each stage. How hard was that to get started? Well, uh, I started from knowing C++ and knowing QML just from few presentations I saw on some conferences. And yeah, it wasn't that hard to get started because basically, well, first application you get for free and that's just the simple start. Uh, for SDK, when I take a look at uh, the help, uh, most of the objects has really nice names like column, uh, button, and stuff like that, list item. So you can guess what they do. Sometimes they are even, yeah, uh, you can see some, if you can see, some examples of code that help, and there are already some open source applications available. So what I did in the beginning was shamelessly reading other people's applications and learning how they did stuff so I can progress. Uh, Qt itself has really amazing documentation if you, well, I tried doing some stuff when I was in high school, university, and the best documentation I ever seen was the Qt one. So they have all objects on one web page, you can just click, they have every method documented, they have examples, they have tutorials, they have everything. There's plenty of documentation for Qt. And yeah, for C++ part, well, C++ is not easy language, I would say, but uh, it's easier than C. Yeah, so if you can... <laughs> So, yeah, well, you can treat it mostly as a C, if you know C, and just create objects with static methods, and that's what I did, because I had a simple application and I didn't want it to play with objects, so I just created a bunch of static methods and screw up with the objects. Yeah, so from this point of view, it wasn't really hard to start. And there, there is IRC channel and mailing list where you can ask when you run into troubles. But mostly Google and documentation helped me before I had to ask people. So, and how does the bit, so this selfish silica thing is the proprietary chunk. So. Do you just work on the stable release, basically, and you've got some binaries for that? Or do they keep updating them in some uh, unstable current version of Mare that uh, is the kind of, uh, you know, if you're trying to keep up with latest, how do they do keep releasing new versions of this? How does it work? Uh, this is uh, the released, yeah, that's the closed bit, Selfie Silica. And they promised stable API, stable ABI. That's that's one thing that doesn't change between releases. Some of some of the elements behave a little bit differently, 
at some point in the release they made something instead of two pixels, three pixels or something like that. Instead of, yeah, it glowed a little bit differently and displayed a little bit differently, but uh, from programmer's point of view, it stayed the same. Everything still worked. And that's one of the reasons why they are not allowing most of the libraries in because they commit they are committed to providing stable API and stable ABI. But uh, there was some project I saw somewhere on GitHub that provided abstraction over this part and made it possible to write application for both Sailfish and Migra, I believe. But uh, I haven't tried it. I just saw that they are working on some abstraction library to basically put on top of the Sailfish Silica so you can write more generic code that will then translate to the native UI. But yeah, I just saw it in some Google results. I don't know more about it. So anything else? So has anyone tried just using this platform without the silica stuff? So then you'd get rid of the non-free part. You might get such a nice interface, but you'd still get an interface, presumably. Well, if you throw away silica, then you will be basically back to Nemo. So you can, you can just install Nemo. You don't need to run this stuff. Uh, I haven't tried it personally. I just... Uh, saw Nemo on my friend's N900 or whatever he had. So yeah, they have some. Uh, actually, some of these, uh, some of their application is possible to compile and run on Selfish, quite without much effort. So it's possible to mix those platform a little bit. In general, I haven't tried to replace it yet. But should, shouldn't be your problem. Uh, they are using s mostly the same stuff underneath. So you should be able to replace the component. But you might lose settings and stuff like that. Some basic application that you might not want to use, want to lose. Okay, so uh, I know you also have uh, Yola phone. So um, how easy is it to actually get the app on a real device? I mean, uh, from Android, I know the ADB, the Android Debug Bridge, I can just easily push a package there, install it, and it immediately runs, and I get the debug interface and everything. Can you also do that? There is an option to do it directly from this SDK. And uh, in case of ADB, eh. instead of ADB, I, has, I have SSH. So this is my URL connected via USB cable. So you would see that it's not my notebook. And I admit that I had some troubles with uh, uploading it directly, but basically mostly I'm too lazy to connect it via cable. So I just left my ULA somewhere in my flat. And when I want to deploy application on the real device, I just use SCP and zipper from command line remotely via Wi-Fi. But we can try deploying it. Release. Let's see what happened. Uh.
that's one thing that I haven't prepared and tested, so that might not work. And after rooting my my device, I also did some other modification, like changing my passwords, SSH keys, and stuff like that. So I might broke the demon that does that. Uh, looks like I might did it because I don't see anything anywhere. Oh, it installed somewhere. Well, I would have to configure it, but it's possible. I would have to take a deeper look. Maybe there is something to configure. Maybe I broke something. But uh, yeah, uh, SSH is always an option. You can SSH to your device and Try it, try running it from there. Uh. And it actually, when you run the application, it will connect to the local Wayland server on that device. So you will see the output of the application while it runs in graphical mode. That's now nice to debug. Well, when you run the graphical application over SSH, it will connect to the Wayland on the device, and you will see the output of the application over the SSH, but the graphical interface will run on the device itself. So that might help. I told you I would ask questions. Uh, this one is a bit more about the marketing stuff. So uh, for now, I just know there is a yellow phone like this, and I know there is one with maybe other colors. Uh, are they also planning uh, on pet devices, like, like uh, lar larger devices? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I know that they are trying to port it to the other cell phones, but I haven't seen anything about tablets yet. Maybe they plan something, maybe they don't. I don't know. So, anything more? So, thank you for your attention, and I hope that you liked it and you will try to build new application for me. Thanks. <laughs>